Hello and welcome to Life is Feudal, Forest Village. Um, I haven't played this game for quite some time. I mean, I know there's been some patches since I last touched it. Uh, so I thought I'd actually break it out again and see what it's like. Because uh, it's a good, good, fun game to play. If you're into this like little, you know, city building, micromanaging of uh, people and so on. I mean, the idea is you're, you're starting off with like a certain number of houses that people live in and You've got uh, certain resources, so we've got some stone, wood and so on in a warehouse. We've got food, clothes and so on in a, in a warehouse. But obviously the idea is to be able to expand out and try and reach... Uh, I, think it's a, I think the goal is pretty much to try and reach a certain like population size. But um, at, at this stage, I mean, the, the priority for me is... I mean, I've got three little houses here to start off with. But we've already got one mm -hmm. person here, so that's Jeremy. He doesn't have anywhere to live. Um, the houses are important because if somebody doesn't have a house to live in, they won't actually go and get anything to eat, uh, so they'll starve. Uh, likewise, when when you get to, to winter in particular and it's getting cold, they've got nowhere to go to, to get warm. So because I've already got one person uh, who's got nowhere to live, my first priority is to build a house. There's, I mean, there's various different types of houses. Each of them comes with its own like benefits, I mean for instance, this this one I like to start with because it doesn't need too many resources. It's better than the, the shack which is what they've got to begin with. Because yeah, it makes them happier. The happier the person is, the more efficient they are at doing their job. And um, it's also got higher capacity so straight off the bat, this, this one here, I'll just turn it around because I want it fit. I want it facing the where I'm going to place the road. This one you can fit about five people into it, whereas the shack at the moment's on three. I can upgrade these things and get more people out of them. There's also uh, a better chance of the and better chance of the, whoever's living inside to have a baby as well, and that is one of the things I do need to start focusing on is getting the population up. But I can't go too fast because otherwise you run into the problem that you know you just run out of resources. So I might have like lots of people and there's just not you know food around, so they starve. Um, so it's a case of, you know, it's, it's very micromanaged, the game. But it's a, it is a really good good, good uh, game to play. I mean, some of the things you can do, for instance, you can, you can actually take control of uh, these people. And I, I tend to do that because this, this game, one of, what it's got on by default, I think it's running, is it's got disasters. So you might have like a, a, a fire, you know, where like lightning strikes things set on fire. But you've also got raiders. And in the early time of the type of game, I, I tend to like to take over somebody and then use those to go and take the raiders out before they cause problems. Uh, there's also uh, there's also like hunters out there. You can get problems when you start uh, breeding things like your, your, your livestock, where then like a wolf or something comes in and starts killing off the livestock. So sometimes even if you've got a hunter that's looking after the area, they might not get there in time. So I like to be able to bring. Well, basically take control of somebody close by and get them to do it. So, as I say, it's a, it's a pretty hands-on game, but it's uh, it's real good fun to fun to play. So, I mean, the first thing I've done, as I've said, is I mean, I've just put in an instruction there to go and build a house. So, we start off with um, six people who can actually do work. So, that's what they're going to do at the moment. They're going to go off and gather resources, and then they're going to take them to this building here, or at least this little plan. But um, that's as far as it'll go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign one person out of all of these six to be a builder. So once all this, all the resources have gone into this, the uh, the builder will come along and then actually start to build it. If there's nothing to build, the builder then kind of falls back to being kind of like the rest of just like a labourer. So the labourers they'll gather resources, they'll build roads, they pick up resources, take them to places like the warehouse or the barn or to you know buildings where you're actually where you've got them uh, an instruction to build something I'm just gonna speed the game up a bit there while we're uh, going over the gameplay but um, starting off I mean we've got a certain number of resources but I need more so because I like to be able to clear the area out that's pretty much what I'm gonna do I want to gather more resources but I like to be able to see you know what's going on around me so I'm gonna put an instruction here to gather all the resources in this area. You can be selective, you can tell them only to gather certain types. 
But uh, for now, because we're so early into the game, I'm just going to tell them to gather resources. Now, one of the things I'm, I definitely need—I mean, I've—I've I've got um, I've got instructions in there to to get Jeremy's house built, but I, I need food. We've we've got quite a bit of food to start off with. You know, we've got about like 700 fish, 900 bread, and so on. But I need food. So one of the things you can do is there's like you can see there's like little schools of fish around in the in the water. So what I want to do is I want to build a, a fisherman's lodge down there, but before I do that, I want to start putting in an instruction for a road. Nothing, you know, nothing major. It's just a dirt road. It doesn't cost anything more than just time uh, to actually build it. And these seem to, as far as I can re remember, these things do seem to take priority over other things. So although, I mean, that was the first instruction I gave out was to build this house. Then I started telling them go and collect resources. I've then told them to start building the road, and interesting enough, they haven't finished the resources, but they've gone straight to building the road. I mean, the good thing about the roads is, I mean, it gives them a, a quicker like path to travel on it. So you know, it makes makes it more efficient for getting things uh, to and fro. So now that I've got that little dirt road in there, I want to put in a fisherman's lodge. Um, you can see the little blue, like little border zone, if you will, shows you the the area that a fisherman will work in. And I've got to get all of those little squares green, so I'm going to line that up pretty much with the road as best I can. Uh, see if I can just extend that road a bit more. All right, that's about as far as the road will go. So they'll they'll come up to be able to get up to here. Once they've done their fishing, they'll be able to bring it to the barn here. So they'll do their fishing, they'll, they'll catch a certain number of fish and then they'll pick up that stack of fish and take it back to the barn. And they can just literally just walk straight up the road. So that's quite good. That uh, should make things more efficient. Now, they're not going to last that long, particularly on, on fish alone, quite frankly. I mean, one of the other things you need to do is, I mean, the efficiency you get is based on their happiness. As far as I recall, the, the happiness can be based on, you know, things like their clothing, how well they're doing, how, you know, um, variety in food and so on. So, I want to look for something else to give them to eat. So, what I'm going to do to begin with, I'm just going to put this little road, side road down the back. Before I forget, I'll just put that in there. Now... Another source of food is the gatherer. So this person, they go out. There's this, this, this. I think it's just like fruit that you, they, it gets categorised as. But they'll go out and they'll, they'll look around in this. And this time we've got like a little green border zone. So anything within that area is where they'll go looking for things. And as far as I'm aware, it's better when they're in a, a sort of like a forest area. Um, the, the plan is for this particular map. I want to kind of reserve this sort of area for farming to begin with. So I want to, I want to leave a bit of a gap, and I'm going to leave this as a sort of like a forest area. Here I'll be able to gather logs, be able to hunt, and so on. And that's got to be done in a forest area. So I'm going to start by putting a gatherer over there. Let's see where that's gone. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Now I'm going to put my little road in, just so I can get a get my bearings. So that's about there. I'll just put that in. It's just it's just basically this is just so I can get my uh, my bearings as to where I am and where I can put the next building. So this is a this is a hunting cabin, and they'll go out and they'll go and kill the wild uh, wild animals that are out there in the forest. So I'm just going to turn it around so I can get that facing the uh, the gatherer there. I'll put that. It's not. It's slightly smaller, so I'll. I'll I mean, that'll do. I'll just line it up as best I can. So now we've got instructions for a gatherer and a, a hunter. So in total, that's about what one. Three, we've got three workers so far, plus the builder, so that's four workers so far. Now, aside from food, they'll also, I mean, they also need to be able to heat their own homes. 
and for that you need the firewood now the firewood we get the firewood from the the lumberjack now my plan is I'm gonna I'm gonna put a forester up here the forester is the one who goes out chops the trees down to create logs and um, they also plant trees so that'll that'll regrow so it keeps this you know nice little ecosystem going the lumberjack will actually chop down the logs uh, into firewood. Now I want that firewood as close to the actual village as I possibly can. I mean theoretically I could have you know put the lumberjack up here. You, you could think well it's going to be more efficient to put them up here where the, the forest is going to be so then they'll be able to get the logs straight away but the the trouble is I mean it's I mean I suppose it's in some respects kind of like six and two threes it just means that the people then are going to have to go out and get the the, the actual firewood from a from a storage further away and I don't know if there's like some sort of limit as to how far these people are willing to go so I'm more inclined to leave the lumberjack as close as possible to here so that you know in the depths of winter when these people need uh, to be able to heat their homes they don't have to travel too far so what will happen is the the lumberjack here will get the wood um, or the logs to be specific chop them up the firewood and they'll take them to this little barn here so I'm gonna I'm gonna build that right next to the barn so that's another instruction we've now got uh, in place so well the fisherman's lodge is up and running and it's got a little question mark because no one's assigned to it so I'm gonna assign one person to be the fish uh, to be a fisherman now you can have up to three people f actually working in here and I'm going to actually deliberately reduce that down to one. I don't want any more than one person working in this uh, little lodge. The idea is that at some point I'll build another fisherman's lodge, probably up here somewhere. Uh, another one probably down here somewhere maybe. Now if I've got three of these lodges, I don't want to be in a situation where say like all three fishermen decide to suddenly go here. Um, I'd rather have one at each and that way we don't deplete the fishing stock straight away because that's a trouble if you overfish in this area you're gonna run out of fish so I want to keep things nice nice and spread out so I'm deliberately limiting it so that if I get to the point where I've got say like three fishermen I'll have one in you know each of the individual lodges so that should be a bit better so at the moment we've got instructions to to gather resources in this area uh, to build their buildings and so on so that's pretty much what we're going to leave it at at that point because I mean I can, sp I can speed the game up um, a bit more and then it'll uh, get done quicker but I've still got to keep an eye on all these resources because once this one gets built for instance this one starts to really uh, burn through the logs and starts creating a lot of firewood so at the moment there's like a I think there's a limit of making say 8,000 once you reach 8,000 firewood the lumberjack here will stop working now I want to I want to drop that I'm going to set a limit of about 500 to begin with because there's not that many people and I, I, at this stage of the game I really need a lot of logs to be able to to be able to make um, to make all these buildings because I need stone I need wood for instance so I'm setting myself a reasonable limit uh, for now just so that as I say I can just protect the amount of logs that get gathered Otherwise, this thing will just burn through them all and I'll, that'll just take forever to, to build anything. So, we've now got one person doing the fishing. Right, so we've got our herbal, um, our gatherer I should say. So, I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to restrict it to one person. So now someone's going to come out here and start, uh, start gathering vegetables or fruit or whatever it is they find out here. Um, don't really see anything at the moment. So it's things like these, for instance, here. They'll go out and gather these sort of things, bring them back, and these are... I think they end up in this little fruit pile here. And if you, if you notice, you get a certain amount of calories depending on what you eat. So like if they eat meat, they'll get more calories out of that than they would out of fruit. Um, you get quite a lot out, out of bread, but there's a... There's like a, a, a process to go through to make things like bread. So, yeah, I mean, these are just basically working away, beavering away. Now that we've got that building there, hopefully we should start getting more kids. Um, 
on what we're up to run about it says we've got 10 people with a capacity for 14 I'm not seeing any babies yet so we'll keep that going but I, I mean one of my next steps is I want to get rid of this but at, because of the winter another thing I need to focus on is is clothing uh, that needs a weaver it also needs uh, well the weaver then is going to need things like flax uh, it's down here so we need to start thinking about growing flax as well um, so it's, it's not just like they don't just like convert hide into clothes they take hide and they take the flax so yeah, so <laughs> start starting out as there's like there's quite a lot on my mind as to what I need to get done just to get get the ball rolling because I want to be progressing into like farms and all sorts. But I've just got to take it step by step. I mean, I could tell these to build like tons and tons of houses. Yay! Let's get those houses built. Let's get more people. But all of a sudden, like all these all this food just suddenly just is gone, and it's like, oh no, everyone's starving. No, no. So yeah, it's, I, I find it better just to take it easy. I mean, if, if you do find yourself actually liking the video, then do please leave a like, because that, that'll help me out a great deal. Uh, I mean, if you're new to the channel, you like these sort of games, then yeah, I mean, do please subscribe and uh, just remember to click the little bell icon if you want to see more content and get reminders for it as well. Um, I mean, if you've, if you've seen these, I mean, if you do like these sort of games, I mean, do, you know, do please provide feedback. There's, there's all sorts of games I like playing, but... Um, just to see, you know, just to see what you might be interested in yourself. Just post that in the comment section below, and I'll take a look. But uh, I mean, anyway, I mean, I'm, I'm running along at a speed of about five, five times speed. So I'm taking it a bit easy on here, because one of the things I found is I, f I fired the game up. I hadn't played it for quite a while. Fired the game up and um, start the tutorial, and oh, Struth had get crashed more or less straight away. It wasn't. I was hardly getting anywhere. I think I was getting about as far as we built the built a house. Gone. Game just suddenly crashed. Um, next time round, it was onto another part of the tutorial. And boop. Gone. Game crashed, and it was, it was really scratching my head. It was driving me nuts because I, I don't remember having that problem before. I mean, as I say, there'd been like a few updates. So I had a bit of a Google to see what what I could find, and. Um, didn't particularly find any well anything that seemed to apply to me. Um, I ended up actually I've just done a complete uninstall of the game, reinstalled it. And that seems to be working fine. I've skipped the tutorial and gone straight into a game, and so far so good. But one of the problems um, some people mentioned was the game speed might be what causes the issue. So I'm I'm just playing it careful. I can go up to ten times speed, but um, some people. Have seem to say oh, yeah, if you go above two times it can cause an issue so for some people it's you know five times seems to be their limit so I'm, I'm just being a bit careful because when I when I last played the game I, as I say I never had any problems at all so I don't really want to spoil it because I really like these sort of games there it's I mean I love the graphics you know they're like the the detail that goes into these sort of like games I mean you know you zoom in and you can see I mean wonderful detail on these it's it's just brilliant how the how they do all this? I mean, you've got all the all the wildlife that's um, wandering around. So we've got things like boars, for instance. Uh, there are bears out here. There are there are wolves. I mean, none of the, as far as I'm aware, none of the wildlife actually attacks anybody. But I think you can get diseases off them, so you've got to be a bit careful. Uh, later down the line, you'll want hunters to keep the animals away from your from your village, but. Um, I'm not really in that position at the moment, so I'm just going to leave it be. But you can do all sorts of fun things. I mean, there's like, let's see, this wait. I'll mm -hmm. wait until this person's finished. So this is Margot. Right, where are you going? That's right, so you're off to mine resources. So tell you what, we're going to take control over. I'm going to pause the game. I'm going to. I can take control of Margot. I mean, this is brilliant. So I mean, you can do things like we can do like a little dance. <laughs> That's just class. Um, there's like you can see like a little blue icon, you know, a little graph starting to move along there. Um, two is to plant trees. One speeds them up, which is interesting. But one of the things I like to do is I, I like to use the bow, especially if you know you're up against um, like raiders in the area. So 
Now I'm back, I can use the, her resources so I can actually get a bow out. And I can take this bear out. Just be careful I don't dare. So it actually shows you where it's going to go. And there's our bear gone, it's very easy. So I'll just right click to get the uh, get rid of the bow. And then you can pick the resource up. So she's now picked the, uh, some meat up for me. And I'll just hit the escape key, and now she's just going to go and take that into the uh, into the barn, and then off she'll go. She'll go and get back to whatever it is she's, she was doing before, which I think was gathering all these resources. As I say, I, I wanted to just basically clear the area out just to get started. I like to have a clear clear view of what's around me. Um, you can see the little trees. I mean, they've been chopped down and they're starting to grow back again. So what's going on up here? So, aha, yeah, right. So that's what we, where we got to. So we've got our, uh, we've got our gatherer up here. We've got our hunter up here. So they'll gather things. It's not very efficient at the moment because we haven't got the road in place. So what I'm going to do is if I can see the blunt thing. Right, so there's the road there. I'm going to get a road extended. Yeah, I'll get this road extended. See how far we can get with that. I mean, the good thing is it doesn't cost it doesn't cost anything except time. It's just a basic dirt road. So that just connects it up. It should make it a bit more efficient. But really, what I want is a I want to give them their own barn and. Um, warehouse so that they can uh, store things locally but I'm quite keen to start getting the population going so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build another house but I'm going to be a bit more uh, fussy about this one so that one that one leads on to there so yeah so that there I'm going to line that up with this one Oh, there was something in the way there for some reason they can't build on it. That's interesting. Okay, so I'll put that one there. So that gives me another house. Because I say, I mean, really, it's it's the it's the population is my next uh, target. So I'm going to build this house. We'll get them gathering enough resources, hopefully, out of this lot to be able to then put it towards here. It's not a great deal really if you need it. I mean they'll they actually come in they'll in this case there's a, there's a tree that they need to chop down, they need to do a bit of terraforming and then they'll need to bring all these resources across and then the builder comes in and starts to take over. So they're gonna go off and you know still gather their resources at some point they'll bring them over here. They'll build this. Now I'm gonna put this then on hold straight away because one of the things you can do with, with houses is you can upgrade them. So, and it tells you like how many resources you need. So straight up I can tell I don't have enough logs. So that's going to be a bit uh, bit of a pain. I need a lot more logs to be able to, to, be able to pull that off. So I'll just put a little instruction to get rid of these. I want to I keep this clear as, as best I can. I think they're all still busy beavering away on the uh, <laughs> on the road. So the the idea is, what I'll do is, I mean, you, it's kind of frustrating in a way. You you can upgrade these buildings, but as soon as you put in an instruction in to say upgrade this building, the building became becomes unusable. So you'd literally throw everybody out onto the street. I can't do that. I mean, one of them is expecting a baby. I mean, that would be like really cruel if I did that. I mean, we're into late summer, so chances are that they'll be stuck out in the middle of winter without anywhere to live. I mean, that would just be like plain nasty. So, what I want to do then is, I want to get this, this little house here built. And as soon as they've actually got it built, I'm going to put in an instruction to pause it. So that means nobody can use it. I mean, as soon as it's built, they'll all jump out and start um, trying to occupy that building. But I'll put a pause rule uh, instruction in. They'll all go back to wherever it is they were living, probably. And then I can upgrade this one. So that gives me six people. So at the moment you've got a maximum of five people can live in here. 
I'll upgrade that and I think, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it, I think it takes me to maybe six or something. And then what I can do is then, I can then, once that's been upgraded, I can then uh, bring that back out as being available uh, by unpausing it. And then what I'll do is, I'll pause this one instead, uh, straight after. That'll force everybody out of this house into this one. You might get somebody out of one of these ones will pop across, I don't know. But then I can upgrade this little house here, so it, it's just basically... It, I'll have to do that sort of thing somewhere down the line. I mean, I can I can basically take two of these houses, little shacks out. I can take two of these out and replace it with just like one of these upgraded ones, but I want to make sure that one gets upgraded as well. I like this, I mean, that, like, see the attention to detail they've got here. I mean, you've even got like little lights and whatever. You can actually, you can actually build lighting as well, so we can put lights, uh, little street lights down here. So I mean, all these little houses. Wow, can't off hear the thunder. There's all sorts of like little decorations you can put in, and these like um, provide happiness. So there's like uh, statues, for instance. It tells you there it increases their mood if they're if they're living within a house that's nearby. But. Um, I mean, I could pop that there, for instance, but it would be a bit of a waste because it would only hit that uh, house up there. I don't know whether it's because it's clipping those two, whether it would be effective there or not. But uh, they're useful things you can put in there. There's, there's other things, you can, things like playgrounds for the kids and so on. But one of the one of the useful things you can put in is actually a schoolhouse. Um, if you put one of those in the kids can go to school and they start to get educated so if anybody's educated they're more efficient as well so there's there's a lot of, kind of a lot of a lot of like thought went into this of you know um, making things better so it, you know it throws quite a lot of challenges at you I mean there's other things you can build later down the line I mean there's all sorts of stuff from the, like the castle section for instance as well uh, you can go out and do trading and that's something I, I would have to do at some point um, you, you you can also actually sort of build your own. I think it's a seaport. Um, if I can find it, yeah, you can build your own port. It's I mean it's a massive building. But the idea is you build one of these, uh, and then you can go out and start doing expeditions. Now that's going to be something that's necessary. For instance, if I want to go out and find uh, donkeys, because you use donkeys for being able to transfer goods from like one storage area to another. So, I mean, at the moment, you, you don't have labourers do that for some reason in this game. They'll go pick things up, taking them, take them to a, a warehouse, but I can't like tell them to move things from, say, like this warehouse, uh, this barn here, for instance. I can't get them to move it over here. For that, I need the donkeys, and to get a donkey, I've got to be able to send out a. Um, a ship to go on exploration. And there's, there's no guarantee, like, you know, the first time round you're suddenly going to get a an actual, um... Oh dear! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, that's bad. Oh well. That's a shame. So, ah, there you go. So, you start off with the babies become children, but they can't do anything. And the children then grow to teenagers, and the teenagers can go to school. But I don't, I don't have one yet. And then once they get to a certain teen, once they get past the teenagers, they, they become adults. I think they're not. I don't think they're that old. To be honest, it's like um, let's have a look. So we've got have a look in this one. So eighteen, twenty-seven. So I mean, teenagers, four and five year old. <laughs> I mean, what? Yeah, six-year-old. When they get to six, so this this is like this is their names, you know. This is their gender. This is how old they are. And this is, you know, what the fallen. This so like got like Annabelle's three, and she's classified as a teenager. Uh, Malia here, she's six. So I think six is when they become available to go and start doing work. So I mean, I, I don't know. It's kind of odd. I mean, yeah, got child labour going on. So anyway, so at least we're at least we're making food. We're into the autumn now. Um, 
I'm quite keen. I'm just going to pause this off because we don't have anything else getting built. Did I ever build a lumberjack? Yes, I did. Right, so we've got a lumberjack and I've got somebody working on it. So we've got two people without a job to do. Now, I'm really keen to get the get a weaver in here but the trouble is I'm gonna I'm gonna need somebody who can um, be able to farm flax for me I mean we've got the hunter the hunter can get hide I believe and they can also get yeah so they can get meat and they can get skin but the trouble is the weaver needs flax so I could potentially assign one person to doing f farming flax and one person to doing weaving but that's I'm right up our limit so I'm quite keen to, you know, get the population going, so, hang on a minute. Oh, Struth. Right, okay, right, straight away I need to pause this off. Right, so everybody's been kicked out and sent over to here. Now, I'm going to put the instruction in to upgrade it, but we don't have enough lumber. So I'll, uh, I'll leave them... To go and gather more. I'll just make sure I've got uh, plenty of orders in here to chop down trees. That's already marked to be chopped. Go on, chop, chop. So at this stage, I've only got really um, there's the builder and one labor laborer can do all this. Now we've got how much firewood? So once that lumberjack has made 500 firewood that's it that's that they're gonna stop what they're doing and then they're gonna jump out and be effectively take a, on a, a laborer's job so that'll add about you know it'll give me three people who can now start chopping things down it's like I've got one builder there but there's nothing them for them to do yeah there's nothing them for them to do so if I go out hmm. and find this person Oh, that's funny, that's Jeremy. <laughs> hey, what would you know? Jeremy, the, the person we did who didn't have a house, ends up becoming a builder. Yeah, so he built his own house. So that's the house that Jeremy built. Good for you, Jeremy. Good man. Wow, he's 33. Wow. Wow, he's been around. Um. So, right, so, yeah, maximum of... of so all I've got left now is two. So, really, I mean... I'm going to need quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of wood so that they can then upgrade this place. You can see, I mean, I've got 76 logs so far. I need 150. So it's a case of as soon as the lumberjacks can. Hopefully, we can get. Hopefully, we'll hit that 500 target before we get into winter. Because as soon as we get into winter, these are going to start burning through the um, through the firewood. But uh, I'm just looking at how long I've been on this now. I mean, I've been playing it a while now so I'm just gonna basically leave it there for this video I mean I do hope you've enjoyed it I mean I, I love playing it I mean it's a very I don't know it, it, you go through parts of the game and I find that sometimes it starts to get a bit stressful but like just like listening to the music for instance that I, I, I find it very therapeutic <laughs> it's just it's nice it's a nice fun thing to be like, like be doing you know taking a break from like all the grinding on arc and what have you so yeah I mean I, I do hope you've uh, enjoyed watching the game I mean, if so, then do please leave a like. I mean, if it's the sort of game you like, uh, yeah, do subscribe if you you know want to see more games like this. Just remember to click the little bell icon, and that that way you'll get notifications when new content comes out. And if you've got any comments or suggestions about the game or anything you want to see on the channel, do please post that in the comment section below. So until the next video, thanks very much for watching. Bye.